The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and the multitude flowed him, because they saw the signs which he did on those who were deceased. Jesus went up into the hills, and there sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then, and seeing that a multitude was coming to him, Jesus said to Philip, how are, you, how are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? This he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grace in the place. So the men sat down, number about 5,000. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten the film, he told his disciples, Get up the fragments left over, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled the twelve buckets, baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw, saw the sign which he had done, they said, This is indeed the prophet who is to come to the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus with the Jew again to hear by himself. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good. And of the time. So we are here, brothers and sisters, to celebrate Jesus' love. Today's readings shall be summarized in this sentence. Eucharist, a cornerstone of Christian life. In other words, Eucharist, a bread of life and a bread of heaven a bread which has been given to us to live. Today's readings would like to teach us many, many things, especially generosity, charity, compassion, faith, humility, and so on. Let us try to think about and to, med to meditate on those readings, especially the gospel. Jesus went to the other side of the sea, and a crowd came to him. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then, and seeing that a multitude was coming to him, Jesus said, How are we to buy bread? so that these people may eat. Compassion. A virtue which has to characterize the Christians. Compassion. In this world, we need, as, 
we, we need that compassion to live with, with our brothers and sisters, to help them to be and to live in the way they, has to, they have to live. Let us pray and ask for that grace, compassion. Love and compassion are necess necessities. Without them, humanity can not survive. We can't survive without love, without compassion. Jesus is taking care of us. When we are suffering, he is suffering too. When we are hungry, he is hungry too. When we are suffering from sickness, he is suffering too. He is suffering with us because of love, because of compassion. Compassion is not a relationship between the healer and the wounded. It is a sign of love. A relation between equals, those who are recognizing that they are all loved and created by Lord. Compassion and love. The, the grace is by which we recognize that we are the children of God. Compassion. Nowadays, many people are feeling unloved, are feeling rejected. Only medicine we can give to them in order to, to heal them is that sign of compassion and love. Men want to be healed. Men are feeling rejected, are wounded. Only compassion and love should help them to feel and to recognize the love of Jesus Christ in their life. Many are hungry, they don't have food. By compassion, they should have food. Men don't have medicines, can't go to school. By this grace of compassion and love, they should go to school, they sh should get got medicines. Let us ask, ask that grace. Let us ask Jesus Christ to help us to be like him, to be able to take care of our brothers and sisters. Compassion goes with the generosity. There is a small boy who has five bread. Five, only five. And two fish. But with five thousand men. Without women and the children. Only five bread. Five bread. Enough to feed those people. Generosity. Generosity. A kind gesture can reach a wound that only compassion can heal. Stephen said, Generosity, a grace that we have to, to, to show, to manifest every day. Generosity against egoism. Generosity make us able to share with our brothers and sisters. Make us able to share with those who don't have anything. It's a kind of attention, which is very, very, very important. At 
attention is purest form of generosity to pay attention to our brothers and sisters this, jesus is you know, lifting up his eyes then and seeing that a crowd was coming to him let us open our eyes to see those who are suffering around us and try to be able to show that love that we have also received from Jesus. And Jesus said to Philip, how are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a lad, a small boy here who have five barrel loaves and two fish, but that are they among so many. But what are they among so many? But that generosity. Jesus prayed and all those people were able to eat. What can I do? What can I give? to feed the people around me? How can I manifest? How can I show the charity? How can I come up and help those who are suffering? I have to open my heart to those in need. By that generosity, the world shall be saved. We are asked, brothers and sisters, to do all the good we can do by all means we can, in all ways we can, at all the time, in order to help those who are suffering. Probably by praying for them, but also by showing some gestures, some signs of love. We have to be a kind of gift to everyone who enters our life and to everyone who is in need. But we can't be generous. We can't show that love without receiving Holy Communion, Eucharist. Jesus is talking about the bread of life. He's giving his life for us. But the Holy Communion, we become brothers and sisters. And St. Paul said, Brethren, I, a prisoner for the Lord, beg you, not ask you, beg you to work in a a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Have been called to be holy. And the, the holy bread, the Eucharist, makes us, help us to be holy. By receiving the Holy Communion, we are worthy. We, we become worthy of the calling to which we have been called with all loudness and meekness, with patience, forbearing one another in love, eager to maintain the unit of the spirit, the bond of peace. This Holy Communion help us to be one body and one spirit, just as we were called to the one hope that belongs to our core, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is above all and through all and in all. But this Holy Communion is always connected with the, the Gospel. While we are trying to live the, Holy, the, the, the Gospel, we are also preparing ourselves to receive the Holy Communion. And then our hearts are opened to our brothers and sisters we shall now proclaim that we are loved and we can 
show that love to our brothers and sisters by our life in whatever we do in whatever we say brothers and sisters saint thomas said the eucharist is the sacrament of life it signifies love it produces love the eucharist is the consumption of two of whole spiritual life that's a bread of life that you have received from jesus christ it's a bread of life by receiving it we become more more and more christian if i can say but not more in the in terms of quality quantity but more in terms of quality if we have we can say that we have received something good something better from the lord is the sacrament if you are we are reading uh, this gospel we are meditating on and on uh, johnny's gospel especially chapter six it's about the holy communion it's about eucharist it's about also charity it's about compassion and jesus said i'm the bread of life he who comes to me shall not hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst. when you come to church preparing to receive the holy communion let us think about what we are receiving and who we are going to receive jesus christ himself the requirements are known the faith prayer to be faithful to the gospel and also to try to clean our hearts but also the fruits are known when we receive that eucharist when we receive the holy communion the fruits jesus is expecting from us are also known charity kindness goodness generosity hospitality humility love the church love of the church love of our brothers and sisters hope but it's not easy that's why you have to pray for to pray one uh, for, uh, to, to pray together as we are under one church as we receive the, the one baptism as you have one parent a uh, one father our god and then recognize that by being brothers and sisters by receiving the one eucharist one bread we become one people and if you are one people it means that you have to fight against those who should try to separate us and pray to be one in jesus christ pray to be unified and united to pray to be connected especially to jesus our lord it's not possible if we are not faithful to the sacrament we receive especially the eucharist if angels could be jealous said one saint if angels could be jealous of men they would be for one reason holy communion if angels could be jealous of men they would be so for one reason holy communion the bread of life bread of heaven the cornerstone of christian life the lord be with you